Hey INFPs, it's Eric Dorr here and today we are talking about why people can find INFP a little bit confusing. Yeah, why do people sometimes think that you're an ISFP or an ENFP and why do people find it hard to, after they get to know you, say that you are 100% an INFP? Well, the truth is everyone is confusing. The mind is not as predictable as we'd like it to be. The truth is personality type is a spectrum and your type as INFP is just your closest fit. But there are some predictable changes for the INFPs that most INFPs will recognize themselves in. And in this video, we're going through all the four INFP subtypes. So the subtypes will change and vary from situation to situation, which means you're not always an INFP. Sometimes you're a little bit like some other personnel types. Some might look a little bit like the ISFP, some like the ENFP, some like maybe an ESTJ, and some perhaps like an ENTJ or ENTP. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, let's talk about the dominant subtype of the INFP. When we hear about INFPs, we hear about dreamers and artists. When we talk about INFP from the perspective of the 16 personalities, we talk about INFPs tendency to engage in daydreaming, to come up with new original ideas and ways of seeing the world. INFPs are in many ways empaths and people that are able to see and feel deeply. So INFPs are often described as highly sensitive people. INFPs are artists and idealists in a true sense and they are known for their strong ethical compass. But that's just one side of the INFP. This is just your dominant side. This is your strongest side. And this is the side that you reveal when you are in a state of flow. Of course, there will be times when you feel less energized and times when you feel more stressed. And so your behavior is going to fluctuate. The truth is, in contrast to this side of the INFP, the INFP also carries a shadow. So let's talk about that shadow. The shadow of the INFP is the extroverted thinking side. If the first side, the dominant side, is represented by introverted feeling, the truth is, no matter how deep you go into introverted feeling, there is always going to be a swing back to extroverted thinking. This is because of what I call the pendulum effect. The more you swing to idealism and dreams, the more the urge will be to want to act on and do something with your dreams. No INFP wants to remain in a state of dreaming forever. Every INFP wants to see their dreams and ideas and creations and art and self-expression be represented in their real life through practical action, through results in the real world. All INFPs have a need for ambition and success in realizing their dreams and who they are in the real world. So, because of this, the INFP, under the name of stress and sometimes anxiety, will push themselves to go out into the world, even if it's difficult and even if it's at times overwhelming and even if at times it will lead to conflict with the outer world. Sometimes as an INFP, you learn to push and stand up for yourself and INFPs actually can be quite fierce in the right situations. If your heart is in the right place and your ethics tell you it's the right thing to do, INFPs can be extremely aggressive and extremely persistent in what they want. One example of this is, for example, characters that tend to be and seem a bit naive and dreamy and blue-eyed, but still somehow manage to push themselves to high states of accomplishment. I think here of, for example, creator Saikuno. Saikuno is a YouTuber who is just trying to make friends and play games, but Saikuno has managed to rocket himself to millions of subscribers and followers. And that's not just because of sheer dumb luck. It's because, because he cares so much about what he does and because he is ready to put in the work to make it happen. And so INFPs that go into extroverted thinking will find themselves to be surprisingly productive. And this is something that's going to throw people off. For example, Saikuno is one of the streamers that published the most videos of all the personalities on the uh, Twitch streaming platform. So the fact that an INFP can be so productive is something very impressive and something that other people can deeply admire about you, despite the fact that you are supposedly an INFP. Now, besides these two sides, INFPs can sometimes resemble ENFPs. In some ways, INFPs can find themselves really escaping to themselves, to their own inner world, to practice and to perfect the way of self-expression and identity. Many INFPs will go deep into themselves to find who they really are. And many INFPs are very introspective 
and spend a lot of time thinking about their identity and how they express themselves, like the INFP, like the ISFP and like other personnel types, INFPs will sometimes withdraw to recharge their batteries. If an INFP feels overwhelmed, they will try to find themselves in a comfortable space. They'll focus on establishing healthy routines and many INFPs seek to have strong and healthy habits. INFPs often talk about, you know, needing to exercise more, wanting to be more uh, reliable, wanting to wake up earlier, and INFPs often do. Many INFPs follow healthy sets of habits and are able to show a healthy amount of self-discipline. And this is something that might sometimes surprise other people. Yeah, sometimes INFPs create the impression that they are flaky and they just do things without thinking and they never commit to anything. Still, when you meet an INFP and you get to know them closer, you'll notice that they have a set of habits which they are very consistent in. For example, they might be, they don't have to be, but they might be vegetarian or vegan, which is something that takes a lot of resistance and resolve. Every day you have to make the choice to eat something different than what everyone else would eat. And to do that, and to be able to do that in the normal main mainstream world, takes a lot of effort and persistence. Other INFPs can be very focused on health or exercise in other forms, and that's something that is very impressive and still very INFP. You don't have to feel less like an INFP because you do it. The truth is you have this need inside of you, and all INFPs have this side inside of them. So if you're able to express that, that's only a good thing. The truth is we want to resolve inner conflict, and so we want to create a space where every side, every version of yourself can coexist peacefully. So if you can find a way to allow yourself to have a healthy set of routines while also having a healthy set of freedoms, if you can allow yourself to be dreamy and to engage in daydreaming just for the sake of daydreaming and fun and recreation, but also if you can allow yourself to be efficient and ambitious and assertive about what you want when you need to want to be and when you want to be, that's all healthy and good. The final fourth side of the INFP is the detective or interrogator. INFPs are not just people that silently and passively observe. Not, INFPs are not always wallflowers. Yeah, sometimes INFPs spot patterns, notice problems, see issues in the world. And when this happens, INFPs feel a need to prove that this is true, that what they are seeing is correct. Instead of just turning a blind eye and pretending it didn't happen, and pretending it doesn't exist, many INFPs will find themselves needing to go out and get evidence for what they observe. And so many INFPs can find themselves going into sciences or academics or into research or some form of journalism. These are areas that require you to do a lot of digging. You need to cover a lot of ground and you need to check over the facts and you need to also be more assertive in pushing your agenda and testing that what you see is correct. Well, Many times you'd wish that people might just listen to you immediately and take you seriously. Sometimes as an INFP, you have to learn to speak out and say what it is that you feel is right. And you have to learn to be a champion and an advocate in a way similar to perhaps an ENFP. So if you're able to do that, that's all healthy and good. And it's only going to support you in being an INFP and in being a healthy INFP because once again, you need to learn to move between all these states, all these four states. And if you're able to do that, you'll have more cognitive flexibility and you'll be able to represent and get your needs met more easily in both the inner world and the outer world. So do you have this inner balance? Which of these subtypes and states do you represent and recognize the most in yourself? And which would you like to work more on? Feel free to let me know down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.